Welcome to Escafé Online, our live show today with Chef Thomas. I brought uh, a classic recipe with me today. We're actually going to be working on matelot. It's actually out of the Escafé cookbook. A lot of students always ask me, man, how are you going to be actually working out of this book? Well, first of all, you open it and uh, you find a recipe you like. In this case, we are actually doing 1565 basic preparation for matelot. Um, looks very complicated when you read through it, but it's actually fairly simple. I was also asked about how to prepare for a dish. So if I read this recipe, some recipes maybe don't even have um, really a step-by-step -step procedure, um, especially the ones in the Escafé cookbook, the classic ones. They kind of only have amounts and uh, very vague descriptions of garnishes and so forth. So um, I was asked to demonstrate this today, how I actually work this. So I know I'm going to make matelot. And uh, the first thing I know is the ingredients. And I know it's going to go on a plate. So I'm actually going to start drawing a dish out. Uh, today I'm going to be a little bit fancy and I'm actually going to use a plate, uh, more of a bowl actually. I know I'm going to put some uh, mushrooms in there. I'm actually going to show you how to flute those. How cool is that? That's a classical way of uh, making uh, mushrooms even nicer. I'm going to have some um, toast in there because that's a classic garnish as well. And then I'm going to have the fish. And because I'm using tilapia, I'm actually going to do two fish fillets in there, which is a really uh, interesting cooking technique. The fish is actually going to get boiled in white wine. Not very often done that most likely it's going to be poaching, but this one actually calls for boiling. So we respect the classic culinary technique. We're just going to plate it up a little bit nicer and more modern. Uh, also, there's no skin on the fish, so there is texture missing. So to get the texture back, one of the classical garnishes is actually uh, salt pork rendered, which we, we call in Austria Grammern. Um, so I'm going to put those on here too on my drawing. Another garnish we use in this uh, particular dish in Matelot is pearl onions. They're glazed. This is a totally different classic uh, recipe. I'm going to actually glaze them uh, very simple with some honey and some uh, fat. And uh, we're going to reserve them. And then we're going to plate them with the mushrooms, with the toast, and with the sauce, and the beautiful rendered salt pork. So at the end, I have a very simple black and white drawing, and I'm like kind of an artist, so I'm actually going to draw this out in color. And a lot of students always tell me, it's like, oh my God, you know, I can't draw. How are you doing this, Chef Thomas? You know what? Keep doing it. Every single time you, you make up a, a dish, you know, draw it up. Use colors, because it always looks better in color. And sometimes I don't even know how this dish is going to be looking like at the end. But when I draw it, I have actually kind of an idea. Now, this dish is very based on brown colors. You know, we have uh, sautéed mushrooms. We have sautéed onions in there and uh, our uh, salt pork. So very simple. And I actually made a nicer picture up before, but this is going to be, hopefully, the dish at the end. So let's get started. <clears throat> Any questions so far? No? Not? Uh, otherwise, I'm going to start asking you questions, which is much more dangerous with a teacher, right? All right. Tilapia, a wonderful fish. Very, very dangerous fish with his fins on top here. So that you don't hurt yourself, I always suggest to take the fins off. Especially this fish was not scaled when I bought it. Descaling this fish with the fins on is extremely uncomfortable. So anything that can poke me, there's a really nasty one on the bottom here, I cut off. 
if I can. This one doesn't come off. Uh, maybe I need my shift knife here. When scissors don't do, use your chef knife. Okay. So the fish is um, fresh. We have clear eyes. The gills are nice and red. It was already got it. I'm going to use, look for the backbone. We cut behind the gills. And then the filleting is actually fairly easy. All I have to do is run my knife along the bones. Now, yes, a lot of students are going to say, yeah, that's not that easy. It just looks easy because you have done it like 100 times. But you know what? With everything else, it's all in practice. And see, all I do is I follow these bones here. And get the question, Chef. Sure. It looks thin. Is it a bony fish? Well, tilapia, when you go to the store, the fillets are very thin. For the matelot, not really a common fish to use, but um, we're going to be trying this, how this is going to look like. But round fish are round fish. They have two fillets. Flat fish have four fillets. So, yeah, the fillet is fairly thin here. But for our application, it should work. Oh, repeat the question. What was All the right. question again? <laughs> we got another one, sir. Okay. About how much does the tilapia weigh? Uh, the question was how much the tilapia weighs. I think it was about a pound and a quarter. I remember that from how much I paid, actually. <laughs> so, yeah, it's a very light fish. Um, I would say for one plate, one fillet, about seven ounces, somewhere around there. That's perfectly fine for our dinner preparation. Chef, can you use the pre-cut frozen tilapia? Of, uh, the question was if I can use a pre-cut frozen tilapia. Yes. I could even switch to a different fish if I don't like tilapia. Even something fatty like a, um, a salmon would be okay. All right, this would be perfect for fish stock. All you have to do is take out the uh, gills, the eyes. This can go in a stock pot with some celery, uh, some white mirepoix. You cook it out for fish stock. So we're going to put this away. Another question, sir. Yes, sir. Can you use sole? Ooh, sole. Um, if I do sole in poppyettes, um, if I roll them up, I would have probably enough substance. For this dish in particular, because it's so flat, um, it would probably fall apart. This would be a little bit too thin. Uh, the original recipe actually leaves the skin on. I'm not a fan of boiled fish skin, so I will actually take the skin off. You got another question, Joe? Yes, sir. A good fish to practice filleting? Whole fish. <laughs> Try filleting on a whole fish. Uh, salmon is good. Trout is good. Anything where you can hold on to uh, the skin very well. You can also use paper towel. Um, all I do is uh, basically move the skin and I let the rest be done by my knife. If I have little pieces left like this, I can actually trim those off afterwards. So it's never ever perfect. So don't give up. You just have to practice, practice, practice. This fillet here has pin bones. It's a round fish. It has to have pin bones. So you can either do this with your fingers uh, or with a uh, needle nosed pliers, which please don't use them for anything else than your fish. Don't use them for car repairs, or electrical repairs, and then go back to the kitchen. That's not sanitary. So we take the pin bones out and uh, we are actually ready to start our cooking process.
another question. Sure. Uh, my eight-year-old aspiring chef would like to know how to remove the eyeball safely. <laughs> Scissors. Scissors. Oh, sorry, the question was how to remove the eyeballs. I would use scissors. All right. So, we are moving over to our um, stovetop now. Could I need to take my prep off? Huh? Okay. So for this recipe, it calls for garlic. We can do whole garlic. We smash it a little bit. The sauce will be strained, so I don't have to worry too much about actually the knife cuts here. I use a couple onions. I always want to curl up my fingertips so I don't cut myself. So we have onions, garlic, and we have a little bit of oil. Oops. And I spilled already. And we actually put this in a rather uh, cold or cool saute pan. Shouldn't sizzle too much because the cooking process we're actually gonna be using is boiling. Another product we're gonna be using is a bouquet garni. So let's make that one. A bouquet garni is the classical, uh, a classical mixture of herbs. We have a bay leaf here, thyme, parsley stems. And what we're doing with this is we actually bind it together. So this is almost like a little, um, a little greeting from the kitchen, a little flower bouquet, if you want to say that. I would not give that to my girlfriend. She probably would be pissed about that. So, all right. Let me put our fillets in there. And it calls for a liter of, of white wine. So you saw the pan was a little bit too hot. This is a 750 milliliter bottle. Uh, there's about three quarters for the dish and a quarter for me. Good. Now we have to bring this to a boil. We forgot peppercorns. Nobody caught that besides me. That's why I'm the chef. But that's perfect. Good. Now this is going to go now until we see that the fish is turning white from its opaque uh, color. So we don't really want to put a time frame on here. We're going to be looking at the fish, how it turns color from opaque to white. So at the end, the fish should actually kind of look like, uh, like the onions. Now if you would say that this looks a little bit like a court bouillon or a short stock. Uh, it is very similar to that. It's obviously a little bit acidic from the white wine. You have your aromatics in there. We don't have really any lemon uh, or any uh, orange zest or something like that in there. So we just have the fish with the wine. All right, in the meanwhile, we're gonna start uh, making our side items, we need to talk about fluting mushrooms and sauteing uh, pearl onions. I actually got fresh small onions here. I like those a little bit more than the pearl onions. I'm sanitizing my knife here. Please make sure, especially with working with fish, that you sanitize very well. 
You have these beautiful fresh onions. If you have something in the yard growing, like onions, leeks even, would be really nice. They obviously are not having the same shape, but this would actually be a really nice addition to uh, your dish. We're gonna again go with a little bit of olive oil. I cooked this before with all the rendered fat I had from making the uh, grammeln. If anybody remembers what that is. Does anybody remember what that is, grammeln? Anybody pays attention here? No, nobody? Oh boy, there will be a test at the end of that video. All right, so the grammeln was the rendered pork fat. So I took the pork fat and actually used it for all the other dishes. So I used it for the onions, and I used it also for the mushrooms. Very much uh, a different flavor component than obviously with olive oil. Okay, so we wanna glaze these onions. Do you want me to switch? Okay. I don't wanna burn them, I wanna glaze them, so I'm gonna saute them up a little bit. My fish is boiling, it's beautiful. I wish there would be smell TV because this stuff smells so yummy. Okay, you can see it's starting caramelizing. Caramelization is nothing else than um, the natural sugars from your product actually caramelizing in the hot pan. Now we can speed up this process by adding a little bit more sugar. In this case, uh, honey. Now, I don't want to burn it. But I want to make sure that I get some heat on here so I, I get the natural flavors out the onion. Sure. Yes. Uh, Cipollini, onions. yes, of course. Any kind of uh, small onions would be perfectly fine. Oh, sorry. The question was to use Cipollini onions. Yes, you can. Oh, there's another camera. I didn't know that. Hi, how are you doing? Good. All right, let's look back into the pan. I get a nice caramelization going. Not a fun start. Fun starts. Everybody was waiting for this. Who doesn't like to work with cognac? Ah. Here we go. We Austrians are known to work with lots of alcohol. Also, we cook with it. Good. So. I'm gonna turn this down. I have good color. Salt and pepper, I have a little mix here of salt and pepper. I like to have that mix done, ready to go. Okay, so the next time you see these onions, they're gonna be in a bowl. All right, we need an expanding. All right, let's check the fish for a little bit here. This looks already perfect. We're gonna take the fish fillets out and reserve them. Don't wanna get that peppercorn in there. Got to be careful that fish likes to fall apart. We're going to reduce this sauce for a little bit longer. Another question, Chef. Yes. Why cognac? Is any other liquor equally as good? Well, there's certainly a couple of applications I would use. Um, the question was if I can use anything else than cognac. Of course, I can use any other brandy, um, anything else which has a high uh, 
content of volu uh, volume of alcohol so I can actually flambe with it. Certain um, alcohols are not as good as uh, cognac and brandy for cooking applications. So I probably would stay with cognac and brandy in your kitchen. Good. The next step I'm going to show you is actually something really fun. A lot of uh, students are always very amazed when I do this and show them. This is actually fluting of a mushroom. So here I have a regular button mushroom. I'm cutting the ends off. And I have a bird's beak knife. A bird's beak knife is um, shaped like a bird's beak, hence the name. Now, I'm just waiting for someone to ask me to do it with my chef knife. No, I'm not some crazy chef who's going to be turning or, or uh, fluting with a chef knife. That's why we have the right tools on hand. If you have a paring knife, that would be though perfectly fine. I hold my knife like this. And I actually drop the knife down and bring the mushroom up. Now, believe me, you can ask me 100 questions now how I'm doing this. I have no idea. No. Practice. I did this not just once. I probably did this a 1,000 times with about hundreds of students, plus in restaurants and hotels. you got to practice that. A really good way to start practicing this is actually a little nursery rhyme you have here in America. It's called the Itsy Bitsy Spider. I'm pretty sure somebody's laughing right now. But if you think about Itsy Bitsy Spider, how is it done? Like this, right? See, I can't even do it. This is pretty much the movement you do. One hand goes towards you, the other hand goes away from you. So let's do this one more time. Mushroom, knife, right about in the middle. Mushroom goes up, knife goes down. And it's literally just a scraping. This mushroom is no good. I have to switch. The reason why this mushroom is not good, it's mushy inside. So that means the knife is not going to cut it. OK, here we go. Here we go. So I'm not really cutting deep. All I do is kind of scrape the surface, bring the mushroom towards me. Drop the knife down. And you want to do this as much from the middle as possible. Quick question. Yes, sir. Uh, I have an induction cooktop. Uh, Substance of gas is not allowed. Um, do you want to flambe uh, with an induction cooktop? Well, you could if you uh, have maybe a uh, lighter right next to you. You know, what you actually ignite has nothing to do with the stove top. It actually has to do with the gases. So the alcohol evaporates, and that's what you actually uh, light on fire. So yeah, even if an induction oven, cooktop, sorry, an induction cooktop, you could flambe. Uh, now, there's a reason why you have induction, though. That means because you have no exhaust. So it's definitely more dangerous to have an open flame. So you would keep this in consideration when you, when you flambe something where you have induction only. OK. So this is my last mushroom for now, because I only want three on my dish. And uh, what you can do is to actually add a little bit more pizzazz to your fluted mushroom. Like that is not already enough pizzazz. You can actually crisscross, or not crisscross, you can actually push your knife point in the top and actually make a little cross uh, star. If you're very artistic, you can try to make hearts in there. Write your initials. How cool is that? All right. Three mushrooms, a saute pan, a little bit of oil. Let's go. Now again, I could have used the rendered pork. I could have used the rendered pork, but I'm using oil just in case we have some uh, vegetarians with us. So 
So while this is going, I'm actually going to strain my sauce and finish that one up. Um, for extra flavor, what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to show this right here. I'm straining, I'm straining, I'm straining. Now if you're really smart, I like to be smart and I don't like to wash dishes too much. Look at this. Perfectly strained out, already back in. Zoom, dun dun dun. Probably made my light out. This is where you always want to have a lighter next to you. Alright, so now I have my sauce strained. Put a little bit of uh, roux in there. It's probably not enough. Bring this to a boil. are cooking down, my sauce is going. I cook those a little bit softer. looks good to me. I just have to play around a little bit with the heat here. Um, some of you, when you send in assessment, do actually the perfect thing. I'm glad that you guys all pay attention to how to test sauces. You take the spoon and you actually put your finger through it and you can see how thick or thin the sauce is continue doing this is actually a really good way um, to test if your sauce is good. Now look at this. I put cold roux in there that's equal parts fat and flour cooked together. It was cold, right? Uh, Dennis did that for me. It was a really nice job on that one. And now all I did is put the cold roux in a hot liquid and look at this. I don't even have to strain this. This is perfectly um, smooth sauce, ready to go. I will taste it now. Hopefully I'm not going to burn myself because otherwise this is going to be very quiet from now on. Got another question. Sure. Did you add more cognac and wine? Did I add more cognac and wine? Cognac and wine, yes. Did you add more? Um, did I add more cognac and wine to the sauce? Mushrooms. To the mushrooms? A little bit of wine uh, because it got to reduce too quickly. I had to heat up a little bit too high and I needed the, the mushrooms to cook. I don't want to put them necessarily raw on the, on the plate. Mushrooms are perfectly fine to eat raw, but not for this dish. All right, sauce is done. Mushrooms are done. I think we're ready to plate. Okay, here's my wonderful bowl. Mm -hmm. I'm looking, oh, okay. My wonderful bowl. I made some toast points. I cut some honey wheat bread in triangles, brushed them with some olive oil, put some uh, garlic on it, toasted them under the salamander, 
you could literally put two slices of honey wheat bread into your toaster and hit toast. That would be just as fine. It gives you a totally different feeling in a plate when you have something crunchy like this in there. All right, and we have some of our onions. Then, yes, now it gets like to the question of, well, if I do this for 50 people, this doesn't look very economical. You know what? If I have 50 people, I have 10 more cooks, and it's perfectly fine at that point. Now, you at home, you might only have you and maybe your daughter or your son or your husband. Well, kick it up a notch. Work a little bit faster. Our beautiful mushrooms. I like uneven numbers, besides the toast points here. So three and three is awesome. I like that. What's the next thing? Oh, you had a fish, right? Where is it? Here we go. Now the fish fillets might be a little bit tricky. Yeah, this is not shaking off the camera. That's actually my hands shaking. And this looks a little bit naked still, right? So we have this beautiful sauce. Now, there's a French term called monter au beurre. I do speak a little bit French, just so you know. Um, that means finish it with butter. This sauce has a perfect shine, and I use it right away. I don't need butter right now. I put this over there. Now, maybe some uh, really professional, high up there chefs are watching this and say, well, wait a minute, Matelot is made with red wine. You know what? I tried it with red wine, not pretty. So white wine, I think, is the way to go. Um, now we have the rendered salt pork. And guess what? I was looking for a garnish. A garnish should be something which pulls this whole thing together, right? It's like, man, this is really something crunchy missing, but it isn't. Now, Chef Escoffier thought of this. This garnish is crunchy. It actually takes and mimics the skin of uh, your fish, if you will. So a boiled fish, although very uncommon, with a little bit crisp of pork. And come on, who doesn't like pork? This dish is fantastic. Now, I was a little bit fancy, though. I took the, crisp, uh, I took the skin of the fish and actually I deep fried it for a little bit extra uh, garnish. So maybe something across. And voila, here you have matelot, a classic Escoffier dish done a little bit Nouvelle Cuisine very tasty, very awesome. Thank you so much for watching us. If we have any more questions, I can answer those right now. Uh, other than that, I want to see this made by you. No questions? Um, you can use the pork fat from the rendering from the salt pork. I used olive oil. Who gets to eat? I just wanted to say, I can't, I can't look at this much longer. I want to eat. <laughs> Maybe Chef Susie, she's next. I can't wait for the apple strudel. Yeah, log back in for apple strudel, guys. Mm-mm-mm. Any more questions? That's it. Thank you.